you know what I realized? I was looking at some of the videos I've done, and I realized I have a habit of starting them out by saying, what, especially when I'm fired up over something, <clears throat> excuse me, starting out with, you know what, man? <laughs> What's up with that? So I don't know how to start this video out. Uh, you know, man. <laughs> well, there we go. Okay, it's it's in my it's in my DNA. And I don't know why. Um, <laughs> um, I guess I could be YouTubey. You might want to see my past pissings and moanings <laughs> over not being YouTubey. And what I thought was a friend taking a crap on me and not mentioning my crap work. Whoa, we're on the tilt. We're going to fix that. I'll have to look for that, right? So I'm weird about that. I'm weird, period. But toss a little tilt in the mix and, man, things get ugly fast. So anyway, where was I? Yeah, I'm not YouTube-y. You know why, man? This is the home of street-level ham radio, Detroit style. And I didn't grow up in Detroit. I grew up in Flint, which is now a war zone. Yeah, the crackheads in Detroit, they don't go anywhere near Flint, Michigan. Boy, could I tell you a couple stories. Oh, dear God. So anyway, that's what the channel is. Am I doing an intro? What the hell am I even doing? I need to do some self-examination here. Uh, I do want to have loose lips. I believe in our right to own guns here in America. <laughs> there goes a few subscribers. <laughs> uh, I believe, I do believe with all my heart in our, in our, uh, our Bill of Rights. And, yeah, I want to have loose lips here, man. I want to have fun. <clears throat> but I do also want people to watch some some of my work here. You know, yeah, like this one. I think there's value to be had here once, <laughs> once I start adding some to this video. <laughs> right? I, I want to have loose lips, but I do want the video to the, the stuff to get mentioned by people and I was a little bit taken aback and you know when I was really taken aback and yeah you're gonna have to look at that on on for a minute let's present a different view because I did a couple chop chops on it in that one video I had to put an end to its life there's one Jesus man I put five or six chops on it. anyway uh I want to talk freely but I want the video to get mentioned if there's something worth mentioning in it, you know. And a fellow named... <clears throat> I don't even know if it's cool to mention people who leave comments to my videos. I'm not a YouTuber. <laughs> I'm not YouTube-y. <laughs> oh, here we go again. Anyway, a fellow... I'm not going to mention the ending of his... Uh, the numbers on his... Uh, but Lizzie fan... He's, he just pointed out, he had the, the bravery to point out, yeah, you dropped too many F-bombs, they're not going to mention your video. And, point taken. So, I can have it both ways. If I'm going to have a freeform video, if I feel spunky, man, if I've taken a few swills of my brew in the title, in parentheses, will be cover, cover your ears or something like that. Lizzie fan, do you get your name from Thin Lizzie? Certainly you don't, because the numbers don't match up. I grew up on Thin Man, I just learned to drive when I was listening to Thin Lizzie, and I'm 61. I was listening to songs like Jailbreak and The Boys Are Back in Town and Dancing in the Moonlight by Thin Lizzie. Is that you, man? <laughs> anyway point taken dude thanks <clears throat> um so what i'm gonna do here um we won't be winding this thing tonight so let me do something you i'm gonna try my best to keep things in focus that's my shunt cap 
See, I don't even know. I'm going to pause this, get rid of the keyboard. Un moment. Okay. I'm in the lab. In the lab of learning, learning and lesions. <laughs> I'm a retired biomedical engineer, remember? Speaking of, man, when I work here, not in this video, but probably in the next, oh man, do I have some stories to share with you? Boy, do I have some stories to share with you. Have you ever worked in a 17-story high research uh, laboratory high-rise? <laughs> Have you ever maintained the Department of Pathology, both gross and autopsy? We'll talk another time. I've got some interesting stories. Are you spiritual? I'm not. Well, I'm spiritual. I am now. Religious? Nope. Didn't grow up that way, man. Not an atheist. I make no judgment calls on that. Tell you what, though, in the basement of that hospital, halfway between the morgue and uh, radiation oncology in the basement where people just don't go. After midnight, I met a spirit. I met an angel. And uh, she changed, she, uh, I do believe she saved my life. Anyway, that's Kip. Kip the Cap. We'll get rid of him for the time being, right? So, I'm gonna start clipping all this crap. You don't need me watch, need to watch all that, right? I started um, the other day, <laughs> and I've been screwing up every. <laughs> I've been screwed up ever since, man. I got issues. You know what, man? I worked in biomedical engineering. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let it roll. You're going to watch, and <laughs> I hope you don't mute your audio. <laughs> yeah, I got no one to talk to. My kids have kids. They got their own kids to deal with. They know the old man's fine. I'm all alone, man. Anyway, uh, where was I talking? What was I talking about? Um, oh, I worked in biomedical engineering most of my adult career, right? And, um... I joke about screwing off a lot, but it's an important part of my life now because uh, it's a pretty, uh, I dealt with some pretty interesting situations. I dealt with the most arrogant human beings on earth. And that relates to my loose lips in my channel when I do this. You know, I like to. I like to talk like the fool. I don't try to sound intelligent. Believe it or not, I am. Um, but I had to deal with the most arrogant human beings on earth, and I I was glad I gladly carried the on call pager as much as possible. <laughs> it paid well, um, <clears throat> and it also meant that uh, when things got real bad. There were times when I had to tell the most arrogant human being surgeon on the planet to stop, stop what he was doing, to demand that he stop <clears throat> and stop harming his patient or stop torturing his patient in a few uh, cases there, so, you know. There was a while there, about a year and a half period, I worked in two biomedical engineering departments. For a year and a half, I did maintenance. See that white wire? I left a handy tent, hand tent, I guess, if you're wearing glasses. I left a handy hint, what that did for me in the last video. Um, for a year and a half between two biomedical engineering jobs, I did maintenance on the most incredibly Fussy, ooh, complicated, both technically and mechanically, machine I've ever dealt with in my whole life, that being a kidney dialysis machine. I did preventive maintenance, I did freaking, it was a nightmare. Whoops, whoops, we bumped the camera, so, you know, unbelievable, unbelievable. And so now, 
I had I used to walk out of work gripping my sw my scrubs dripping with sweat from the stress and the exhilaration and uh on one hand I I miss that world I dreamed about that world for a few years uh and now I'm I've gone the other way I've turned the page and man oh, I screw off for a living I get Social Security. I beat the frickin' government in my appeal. And, uh, they did their job and I did mine. I did mine a little better and I won the case. And I'm, uh, I'm on Social Security. I'm <clears throat> starting to get back some of the money that Uncle Sam stole from me my whole adult life. And screwing off as much as possible, right? So here we go. Here's the core. A double core. FT-140-43, right? My blue uh, wound FT-120 core is in the other room. <laughs> uh, not in use, right? Because I'm here doing this. Might be in use in a while. <laughs> so, um, hang on, I'm going to pause this and go grab another core, another a bear FT-120 core. So a lot of you po folks have them or that you're aware of the difference in size but I'm gonna grab another hang on okay I'm back it was here the whole time I'm not used to working here at the uh, electronics desk in the bed, in the other room so these are the two FT 120 140 43 cores glued together I'm not breaking them apart for the video this is an FT 120 24 <laughs> This is an FT-12043 core to compare the two. Oh, yeah, I gotta look at my phone and see that you can see anything worthwhile. I don't know if you can see the difference there. Phone's crap. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah. There's a difference in size, not much. 0.2 inches. FT-120, 1.2 inches. FT-140, 1.4 inches. This doubled FT-140 can handle 100 watts RMS CW key down as long as you want to lay a brick on your key. <clears throat> I have to laugh. <clears throat> In the comments, I was, uh, you know, communicating with a fellow who often comments, um, cool guy. Guitar Zan. When I hey dude, when I saw your your handle for the first time, I about lost it. I literally laughed out loud repeatedly, man. <laughs> I freaking love it. That's amazing, man. It it made an impact on me. <laughs> it really did, dude. Anyway, uh, he's he's winding an end on with an FT two forty, like the one I did. I sent my brother or gave my brother, right? leaving me with this one <clears throat> but the same fellow convinced me to destroy he con didn't con me he brainwashed me and made me think I wanted to destroy my best on it guitar Zan, dude <laughs> I can't mess with him like that he's a good cool guy anyway so it left me with this and I you know I playing with that and so I quit using this the other day when I promised uh, that I better that I'd get to work and quit screwing around Okay, I never quit screwing around right I've been honest about that man. I've been honest about that <clears throat> I Come from an hour north of Detroit Michigan What more can you possibly expect of? <laughs> you know what? That's that's my motto of life, man. That's <clears throat> that's self acceptance, man. So it left honestly, it left me with this to use, and it works so freaking well. I was it's shocking how efficient it is and how unwarm <laughs> it got. No matter what I did, drop a brick on the key at a hundred watts, it just straight up didn't matter. 
I thought maybe, well, that's because I'm on 80 meters and I was using my 80 meter wire at the time, you know, half wave wire on, on uh, yeah. Uh, but no, I tried it on, on non-resonant frequencies, man. I, I fiddled with it with my clip lead trick thing and I got it to be happy on 30 meters and 17 meters without using the radio's tuner because I'm just not. And um, it didn't get hot. It got a little warm, you know, 100 watts, key down for five minutes straight. It was, you know, it was about as warm as the surface of this desk feels with a couple incandescent lights shining on it. If I were in the shower, I'd want it a heck of a lot warmer than that. It's not shower warm, you know, with, when I'm not in my testing. And then I started screwing with the blue one. Look at the last couple videos, man. That's what it's wound on. An FT12043 core. That's what it's wound on. You know what I did? And in that video with K4, oh, what's this called? BBH. I don't have it available from Georgia. I never even thought about it. I heard them. I grabbed my phone. I stuck it on the little tripod crap I have in there. And I hit the record button. I wanted to record me trying to work him. I didn't know if I'd be able to, but I did. And I... You know, I cranked the power up to 100 watts. I wanted him to hear me, man. I mean, geez. It's the second contact I've made with it. And uh, so I proceeded and had a nice little chat with the guy at 100 watts PEP. And then after I, after I was done recording, I looked over and saw that little FT-120-43 core on on, man. And uh, I felt it, and it was, it was bath water warm, whatever that is. What's bath water warm for a human? 100 degrees Fahrenheit? 105? You know? Celsius, what? 37, 38 or 39 degrees Celsius? It was barely noticeably warm. Anyway, so, anyway, I wanted to get that out of me. There's the core I'm going to wind. i got to put it, things back. People can't see crap. <clears throat> um, neither can I with this camera in my face. Um, this is just gutter level video <laughs> so I'm going to swing you over we cut that heap of wire out of there and wait I said wire right we need to talk about wire we're not ready to wind crap this is what I've used in the past That not on the blue one in there though that blue one in there is stranded hookup wire that one in there hang on is that it's stranded hookup wire voltage rating unknown hang on okay so then the the core that we're going to be winding right am i zoomed in i believe i am hang on Ooh, wrong way charlie all right um that's the one i took apart that's one we're going to rewind and I really, really, really want an 81 to 1 tap. I've got to be, have enough room in that core to have that many taps. I want 7 taps. I can't get any bigger than that. That's what, that's what I use. That is um, Teflon insulated wire that they use on fluorescent ballast transformers in light fixtures. If you get a new ballast, the wires are ridiculously long. <clears throat> And in the past, when I've changed them as favors for people, uh, what I cut off, uh, and I cut off as much as I can because I know I'm saving it. Um, that's what that is. I don't know what it's rated at, but those ballasts, I think they're open circuit voltages, 600 volts when those lamps start. Um, I believe, but I'm not positive. I make no claims as to uh, being knowledgeable. Um... So there's another YouTuber I'm going to mention tomorrow in the next session, in the next when we wind the video. Speaking of knowledgeable, the man is genius. The man produced my favorite videos of all time on YouTube. He wasn't the type of YouTuber that uploaded daily or anything like that. Um, toward, I don't know, I can't, a couple times a week, maybe once a week. 
But the reason why is because this man is so incredibly intelligent. Oops, I, I hit the camera. And his videos were so fantastically well researched. Unbelievable. Sometimes a little controversial. And that's why I lived for these things, man. It was unreal. And I found out something sad. Something disturbing, man. People like that, man. That's world class entertainment that educates. This guy was the best, and he had just unreal on camera personality, you know? Man, the other day, uh, he left a comment, and it got me thinking, yeah, I haven't heard from him in a while. Oh, Jesus Christ. I gotta change tracks. <laughs> okay, so this is all of that wire. Oh, I have this brown. That's my. That's the remainder of my collection of ballast wire. Um, I think we'll have enough. Mm, it's going to be close, man. I'm going to miss my pretty colorful ball ballast or uh, on and I had. Now it's going to be blue and black and brown, and white. <laughs> Gone is the yellow. Gone is the red. <laughs> And I'm glad. You know what, man? Screw that on on. I'm glad it's gone. Yeah. I've used it and I've used it and I've even abused it a little. Uh, pumping a little power into it with no antenna hook to it. Roasting it. That little one, that little one, decided to do a torture test. Man, I laid the key on the brick at 100 watts RMS CW. Uh, true CW, it wasn't being keyed, it was a 100 watt carrier, sine wave, and then I forgot about it, man, about uh, three or four minutes later, I smelled hot plastic, <laughs> full disclosure, some people like to use magnet wire, I don't, magnet wire is fine, there's nothing magic about it, it's just enamel coated wire, real real hard enamel coating and that's why I don't like it I hate scraping that crap off magnet wire if I'm building a small broadband transformer or a small um, inductor toroidal inductor for a, a transceiver project that I'm designing and prototyping and whatnot then sure I of course I use magnet wire because there's no insulation it's it's so thin you get lots of turns on your core other than that no benefit to it in my eye <laughs> if you believe differently call me out I'd like to put seven taps on this FT120 core man not doable not doable not even with the uh, hookup wire I used on um, that blue one out there is just like the kind you'd find on a clip lead or on those rolls I showed up there I think it was uh, um, Robbie. Uh, what's his? Oh, geez. Oh, boy. What's his call? I'm at the wrong computer. Robbie um, left a comment. He's in Spain. EI2. Ah, Jesus. And I think he said he was going to make a. a uh, an end pad out of this kind of wire. This is some incredibly light, light, lightweight wire. I know this isn't un unrelated, but this is a 40 meter end pad right here. 62 feet, man. It weighs about three ounces, you know. I can take this wire literally with two fingers on each hand. I can pull hard and break that. That's how lightweight it is. But even with a 40 meter long, it's 62 feet 11 inches. That's what it came out at. Oh, I'm not even on camera. Even at that length, it easily supports itself for a, uh, a chaos antenna or a, uh, you know, a desperation antenna it might do you. Um, but anyway, we need to talk about wire. And I know this works fine, but I want to show you something. And this is where the fun stops because um, I'm going to pause you and I'm going to start a spreadsheet. I want to show you something. 
Okay, I want to show you something on the spreadsheet. I'm going to click these lights up and see if that improves anything. Remember, this is Detroit style. <laughs> I got to give that up, man. So what I want to show, and this relates to my wire selection, okay? How much current flows through that uh, wire? Well, let's look. Down here, um, th this section I wrote to give us that giving given power and resistance okay and let's talk worst case scenario cw constant i guess a worst case scenario would be a digital mode or fm where you're transmitting a, a true constant carrier right with cw it's keyed at least <clears throat> which greatly reduces your duty cycle and the heating effects on but it doesn't reduce uh um ohmic losses in the wire uh, when you've got a carrier present you've got ohmic losses and let's look and see how much current we've got in the wire both primary and secondary okay and let's say 100 watts okay I had to get my keyboard off the shelf because I keep it on the shelf to give me space to work on the primary the input winding the 50 ohm winding okay um, ideally, a pure resistance, no reactants, um, and usually the case, close to it. Worst case scenario, CW, when you've got the carrier present, you're flowing 1.4 amps RMS through the primary winding. That's not much. That hookup wire I showed you could e easily handle that with very minimal heating effects and I just realized I'm a freaking maggot because I could have I could have zoomed you in Jesus man really Charlie that's freaking rude uh yeah uh, and I'm trying to get this camera to brighten up and when I do it just uh it zooms in so I guess I'm screwed woohoo all right so that's on the primary winding that's only 1.41 amps which isn't much right that's 100 watts rms cw key, you know key down um on the secondary winding well i've been using the 81 to 1 tap with a wire and with a, a perfectly flat match so therefore one can surmise that the impedance is a pure resistance of 4000 ohms What's the current in the secondary winding? 158 milliamps. You really don't have to worry about wire gauge, folks. You know, you really don't, man. And that uh, that uh, ballast, that that Teflon solid ballast wire that I, I really do like using that, man. And you'll see why when we do the winding. Uh, very, very easy to work with, man. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, at one end of the extreme is either that or stranded hookup wire. Uh, either or <coughs> works fine. Uh, matter of fact, maybe I'll choose to use stranded hookup wire when we wind the uh, on end tomorrow. Um, I probably will, as a matter of fact. Why not, right? It's dandy. Works gloriously. So that said, so that, uh, that's what I wanted to talk about with wire gauge. Let's take a look see at uh, 10 watts. Um, you know, QRP is out there, so what? Let's look at 10 watts. I know you'd like 5, but screw it, 10 watts. In the secondary winding of my on and out there, the way I use them, I've got 50 milliamps flowing. On the primary winding, the input, less than half an amp, 447 milliamps. So I wanted to talk about that. Now, I'm not the safety police, and uh, if you touch, if you touch your onion while whilst applying a carrier to it, you probably deserve what you what you get, which is a hell of a surprise. <laughs> it's not going to kill you. Um, here's what I'm looking for now. To calculate the peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage on your onion taps, 
you could uh, you could use Ohm's law while well, you're going to anyway, right? But you could uh, I combined them because uh, I basically combined a simple Ohm's law and the ones that use either an ex, uh, you know, a, a root function or a square function. That's what I'm trying to say, because you have to use a square function to compute this. So I added a section just for that. Um, how many volts? Oh, let's look at the primary winding. 50 ohms, right? Let's say you're running 5 watts this time. And by the way, when you use a spreadsheet, if anyone wants it, you can have it. I'll email it to you or whatever. When you make an entry, like I just typed, tap 5, I can either arrow up like this, and it'll accept the entry, or you can hit the enter key, right? So, using 5 watts on the primary of that onion, you've got 44 volts. You'll feel that. Yeah, that'll give you a nice little tingle. That's on the primary. Uh, what if about the what about on my when I use the way I use it? What about when I'm using my 81 to 1 tap and you've got four kilo ohms? Or you can hit the enter key when you make your it doesn't matter anything you do. It's, now then, using QRP, you want to touch that alligator clip on your end of your antenna wire? Yeah, you got you you're gonna get a nasty little bite. RF burns are weird, man. I used to chat on IRC chat rooms, and that was my that was my my nick, man. I was RF burns with a Z. Uh, an RF burn is like a little lightning bolt of a shock. It's exactly what it is, and that it'll pierce your skin. It'll burn right through your skin. And it freaking hurts, man. It'll make you scream like a like a nut nutcase. So QRP five watts, man. You're gonna have four hundred volts on your anten the end of your antenna. You touch that, you're gonna get cooked. You're gonna get roasted, man. You won't get injured. Well, you might. It might scare the hell out of you and knock you over and break your fr freaking. And I've heard of that happening. I know an electrician, I know of an electrician that got such a nasty shock working in a panel at a park I used to work at while in college. It threw him against the other, the opposite wall in an eight foot wide trailer and it killed him. He hit his head on a pipe and it killed him. Um, <clears throat> so, people, people, 400 volts using QRP, you want to use 100 watts? What do you think? And this t this has this has bearing on wire selection, by the way. Obviously, at a hundred watts, your secondary winding should see a maximum of about seventeen hundred and eighty-eight volts. Uh, if you're going to run a hundred watts with an end-fed half wave using an eighty-one to one tap, you've got that kind of voltage on that secondary winding. Um, that's why I wind my onions the way I wind them. I want the the highest Z winding with the highest voltage to end up next to the ground connection on the input. Um, that's why I do it the way I do it. That's why. That's why. Right there, you know. Um, so far, and yeah, you know, I've been... I've been transmitting 100 watts RMS key down with no problems so far. I've had no arcing problems. Um, not with that double core on them that's wound with that uh, ballast wire. And also not with the FT240 core that I gave away to my brother Art because I love him. And, um, and I think he can get a lot of benefit from it. So... Um, so far, I've had no arcing problems using that wire, and like I said, though, I don't know what's, what it's rated at. In everyday use, I, I do know that the open circuit voltage of those transformers is in excess of 600 volts, but that's all I know about that wire. So, you know, you want to see something fun? 
what if you're using an un un? What if you're going to wind an, an, an FT240, 43 un un? Which, you know, I've never experimented with an un un at that power level. At 100 watts, I have lots, lots. <laughs> but a kilowatt? No. What about 1500 watts? How will an FT240, 43 core handle that in regard to efficiency and heating? The efficiency should remain relatively, relatively unchanged, but the question is, what is the efficiency? And at the 1500 watt level, how hot or how warm will that FT243 core get, you know? So this all comes into, into play. So for me, bottom line, for me, even that little FT120, 43 core like we've been talking about, like I've been sticking on my finger, in that QSO that I posted yesterday, I had a nice little chat with a guy, man, at 100 watts PEP. That's not RMS, that's PEP. With a typical human voice, you can reduce that 100 watts by a factor of about 2.3, I think. So the average power is much, much, much less using a single sideband than CW, but that's an FT120 core, 100 watts PEP. Had a nice little chat with a guy. Core barely got warm. So draw your own conclusions. And at no time have I ever seen any arcing using CW at the 100 watt level or a single sideband at the 100 watt PEP level using this wire. Nor have I seen any so far using that smaller gauge, thinner, mostly because the insulation's thinner. But I. Uh, hookup wire, stranded hookup wire, like on that core that's, that I keep screwing with in there instead of recording this video, right? So, they're all your own conclusions. All I can say is I've been very satisfied using this, uh, this uh, ballast transformer wire. Um, you look on eBay or Amazon, I'm sure you can just buy tons of it real cheap. And it's not made for that application. It's just Teflon insulated wire, solid wire and use stranded. I find stranded even easier to work with. People think you need solid core wire for none and that's crazy talk. No you don't. No you don't. Uh, <laughs> nor do you need magnet wire. Anyway, back to this thing man. You want to talk about voltages? You want to talk about roasting your fingers? That's a hundred watts. Uh, on the secondary, right? On the 81 tap? Holy cow. What if you're running 1500 watts, man? RMS too many zeros, <laughs> 15 kilowatts. What if you're running 1500 watts RMS, man, CW? Ouch. Just a hair under 7 kilovolts. You want to run 1500 watts, man, with your FT240-43 core? Yeah, so do I. <laughs> and I will be, man. I want an SB220. I want dual... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Anyone out there, man, please sell me an SB220. Please, please, please. Um, I, I do want to buy one. Um, I love QRP, but I want to play with QRL. I want to drop the key. I want to drop a brick on my key and lay some amperage down the feed line. I'm changing these days, man. So anyways, that's why I wanted to look at this spreadsheet. It's a little bit about safety, but let's just say 100 watts, right? Um, 1,700 volts, very worst case, very worst case. On the input to the, uh, on the input to the unum, you're looking at 200 volts at 100 watts, okay? That's the voltage. You gotta have wire capable of, of sustaining 200 volts at the 100 watt level on the uh, input. So, a little bit about safety, a little about wire gauge. A little bit about wire gauge, right? You wanna use 100 watts? Let's say you're just wanting 100 watt. You've got a 100 watt transceiver. On the input, you've got 1.41 amps. Key down, CW. You know what, man? You My know. memory card built up, so that's cool. You know what that means? It's time to screw up. Goodbye, you old on.
I'm sick of you. I'm tired of you. I want a nicer, newer, prettier model. I'm upgrading, man. Nature's cruel. 73. Next video, we'll wind the core.